Hey guys, Liam here. I'm bringing a bit of an unusual video today. I'm not really a computer guy, but I've started to get into that a little bit just out of necessity because I kept having my old laptops uh, become slower and slower because, you know, uh, Windows keeps getting more complicated and stuff. Not that I use Windows anymore, but I'll show you guys some interesting stuff you can do with older laptops that you can't do with modern laptops. Uh, now, older laptops have a variety of downsides. There's specific hardware downsides because uh, technology changes and like you can't upgrade them uh, infinitely to modern stuff, but you can upgrade a lot of things in them, interestingly, because they actually have socketed RAM and processors a lot of times, whereas newer laptops have all that stuff permanently soldered in, so you cannot change that at all. So let me show you guys here what I'm working with. Now, it's taken apart right now, but this is an HP G7 laptop from 2012. Um, it has some big downsides and some big upsides. I really like the HP G series, and I had a G6 as my first ever laptop, and I've recently put it back into service, even though it's over 10 years old, by doing some upgrades to it and running Linux on it. But I bought this one on eBay because I was searching up uh, like HPG laptops looking for some parts, and I saw this one and I was like, oh man, it's so beautiful. I really like the different colors they came in, which is super unique. So it's all blown apart here. And uh, I have not used this laptop much because even though it did work and it did install Linux nicely, um, it had a really, really loud cooling fan. So I had to take the whole thing apart, right down completely apart to the board, just the last step, and the cooling fan was on the bottom of the board. So this is the original cooling fan and it came in this little shroud with the heat sink going to the processor. Let's see here. I don't know if you'll be able to pick this up, but when I spin it really fast, I can actually feel a slight kind of motion. It's really, really subtle. And if you spin it slowly, you don't feel it. But if you spin it fast, you start to feel the So I had to buy a new cooling fan, which was like, honestly, 10 bucks. Parts for old laptops are so affordable, it's crazy. So this one is like butter smooth. So I'm going to install that. Uh, whenever you, uh, actually on any old laptop, if it's more than like five years old, if you're going down and disassembling it, you should get some heat sink compound and replace that. So a lot of laptops have overheating problems and old laptops especially. And the basic thing is to blow out the heat sink and fan to get any dust out. But this is a secondary problem that after a few years, the compound that transfers heat between the uh, CPU and the uh, heat sink dries out and you can replace it. Heat sink compound is also only like 10 bucks. So all this stuff is really, really cheap on old laptops and you can get them running quite well. My purple laptop, my first one, I, I used it for about five years and then it became far too slow, especially after changing to Windows 10 from Windows 7, which is what it was originally running. And uh, then I had to buy a different laptop because I was like, this thing takes, you know, half an hour from when you press the start button to actually being able to open like Firefox or something. So the silver laptop, it did, it did better. It had a, it was a newer laptop, obviously, but it finally got worn. And then I was like, well, rather than buying a new laptop, I really miss my old laptop and how well it worked, my purple one. So I did some stuff to it and the startup time went from 30 minutes running Windows or, or more, 40 minutes in some cases, to less than a minute. And there's a variety of things you can do for that. Uh, but anyway, this is this is one that will speed it up a little bit if your laptop is getting slow, because when your CPU starts to get hot, uh, it simply slows down the CPU in order to not burn everything up. So when I put this back together, I'm going to replace that gel. It's been replaced uh, last time I disassembled this, but it you every time you open it up, it's a good idea to replace it. So. Uh, yeah, but there's a lot of things on here that you can directly replace. This is the CMOS battery. It's very accessible. Uh, I haven't replaced that one yet, but it seems to still be working, so I might just leave it. And there's the CPU. This is actually a socketed CPU. Um, it's extremely common on laptops to have those soldered in now. And when I've seen people on forums talking about upgrading the CPUs in these, they say, well, they might be soldered. No, they're not. They're actually just socketed. You can, re you can take it out and replace it. And there is a CPU I can buy for this laptop that is faster that would fit in there. Uh, it's a little bit too much for me right now, so I'll leave that. Uh, these are the two RAM slots. Now, an interesting thing is that I think at the time, 8 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes per card was the maximum you could get for this uh, size profile. I think it's SDR3 or something. But uh, you can actually buy 8 gigabyte cards now. So on my purple laptop, that one has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is really, really good. Uh, another thing you can do, and this is probably the biggest thing for startup time. Let's actually go over to, I have some of the spare parts over here. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, here we go. Ah. 
So this right here, not this thing, this right here is an SSD. So old laptops used to use uh, disk drives for storing all the data, and it's a disk, a two and a half inch disk that spins at 5,000 RPM. And those can store a lot of data, but they're slow because they need to start spinning and then read the data. SSDs aren't used in like everything now, and it's a it's a silicon microchip inside that stores data, and they can access it very, very, very quickly because there's no moving parts. The downside is that they have slightly less space, but what you can do, interestingly, is so if you, anyway, if you install one of these in your laptop and then install your operating system to it, your laptop will start up noticeably faster because it doesn't have to spin up the disk and everything, so things get started very quickly. Now, an interesting thing that you can do is that these use what's called a SATA connector, which is that connector right there. Let's see. Yeah, that type of connector is what's used for interfacing with the... Um, with the CPU. Let's get rid of these RAM cards here. I have these sitting here. There, I just had everything disassembled. So this is the disk drive. Now, I don't really use much uh, DVD or CD media anymore, but these also use a SATA connection. So what you can do, interestingly, is you can buy a tray that sits in the place of your DVD drive and can hold another hard disk. So for example, you could have an SSD for your main disk to start up your computer, but then you can put a higher capacity uh, spinny disk inside of a, a tray that fits into this space, and so you could have like two terabytes of data as a secondary drive in your computer, in your old laptop. There's so many cool things you can do. These are the RAM sticks that I was talking about. These are like a standard size, so you can buy different sizes, and they're quite affordable. I think the eight gigabyte cards might be it's, uh, I think it's l probably less than 60 bucks to upgrade to 16 gigabytes. So it's not, not too expensive at all. This is the Wi-Fi card. This is also a standard type of connector. So what's interesting too is that this Wi-Fi card is, you know, 10 years old or something like that. So it doesn't support all the newest features, but you can actually buy Wi-Fi cards of the same profile for, once again, quite cheap, like 10 or 20 bucks, depending on what it is exactly that support like Wi-Fi 6 and all the newest standards and stuff. Now there's a weird problem with the HP G series laptops, which is that they have a limited amount of chips they will accept. It's kind of like a, it's kind of a scam on HP's part, but they have a list of only like 20 chips that they will accept. And they are only HP chips from 10 years ago. And there isn't an easy way around that. So I'm kind of stuck with that with using old Wi-Fi. but given the many other things that I can upgrade, I think it's a really good, uh, it's a really good trade-off. Good for the environment. You don't need to buy a completely new laptop. And you can keep the old ones running. And it's it's really interesting, too, because the fact that these old laptops can run quite fast and quite modern, running uh, modern programs and running on the internet and stuff, is really an indication that it is planned obsolescence. Windows that, and, and all these companies, Apple and Google, they just keep increasing the complexity of their operating systems to make their older hardware... Um, obsolete basically and um, by running by running Linux which you can run on certain iPhones it's a little more or certain not iPhones you can run on certain smartphones not iPhones it's a little bit more complicated and I haven't tried it yet but I will at some point but yeah on laptops or old computers it's really a great option it's brings your old computers to life and if you want to try that sort of thing I recommend a lot everyone has an old laptop that's you know junk and doesn't work anymore but they never threw it away you can totally try this on uh, on an old laptop and it's very affordable um, an ssd a, a brand new one probably costs about 100 bucks to get a decent one with some decent space i recommend about 500 gigabytes you don't need to get a huge one because once again you can hard disk drives are very affordable as an alternative to use external storage but uh yeah those are quite affordable now too that's probably the most expensive part of an upgrade but the ssd is is helpful and worth it and you want to you might consider if you if your laptop had very little ram in the first place to upgrade it a bit uh, and before you go do an upgrade like this you'll want to look at uh you want to look at exactly what is replaceable on your computer and kind of take it apart and start taking the chips out and matching it up to what you can get and stuff but generally it should be pretty smooth i don't think most computers have that wi-fi card problem like hp uh but you can search it up your specific model and stuff i had another issue too where uh these little rivets that hold the screen on they cracked out i think the plastic they're cracked so i um i just epoxied them back in just to firm things up a little bit so the screen is a little less wobbly but 
yeah, it's cheap fun to do an old laptop like this. I daily, I daily run a laptop like this for doing video editing. It's what I edit all my, all my videos on is my old 12 year old or 11 year old HP G6 laptop. And I'll show that one off in a different video at some point, but yeah, I'm going to start putting this thing back together with the new cooling fan. Hopefully it's quieter and, uh, and yeah, this one has a little bit more power than the purple one, so it'd be even a little better for editing. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, it's kind of an unusual video, but if you guys like this type of thing, I could probably do some more at some point. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.